With so many new additional basic air breathing engines, also known as jet engines, in Kerbal Space Program 1.05, it may be difficult to decide which engine to use for what craft and for what purpose. In the previous video, I talked about how awesome repair engines are and why they're probably the best choice for SSTOs. And today we're going to be talking about another new engine that has been added. And I'll tell you my opinion why uh, this particular engine might be best for one type of a craft that we all love. So let's talk about this today. Welcome to What The Math and let's try to see how we what we can do with this particular uh, craft here. And yep. I thought as much. It's just going to create a beautiful pattern of galactic uh, proportions. This is beautiful, but it's not going to fly. I was actually wondering if it's going to fly or not, and it's not. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. Enjoy the pattern, and today we're going to be focusing on yet another new engine in Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> And we're going to be using this really, really simple design, uh, this craft right here. It's going to be our test uh, test craft, and we're going to be testing these uh, new uh, jet engines to see um, their efficiency when it comes to building a VTOL. And what's a VTOL? Well, it's a, it's a craft also known as vertical takeoff or landing. In other words, it's usually uh, an airplane that can basically land vertically and land vertically without using any kind of uh, a runway or a landing path. So. And so the new engines that we're going to be testing, or the rework engines that we're going to be testing are Juno, we're going to take a look at Weasley, we're going to take a look at Ramjet. We're not going to be doing repairs because I think repairs are really awesome for SSTOs, but not as much for anything else. And we're also going to take a look at Panther. This is a new engine, it's, it's the one that has an afterburner. So let's start with Juno. And so what I'm going to be looking at is how efficient is this craft at taking off? And also how quickly can it actually change its uh, propulsion rate and basically land. So for VTOLs, the so-called acceleration, I guess, uh, I guess yeah, that's what you could call it, is really important because here I want to be able to take off really quickly and then change my propulsion speed really quickly as well so that I can actually land. All right, this craft is a little bit too heavy for, for these four engines, but here we go. So if I were to, okay, yeah, that's not really good. If I were to try to uh, stop my engines mid-flight or even just reduce the throttle a little bit uh, in flight, uh, they should be able to respond a little bit quicker. Now here, you can see the response time is a little bit longer than, than I kind of want. And also, um, they're unable to basically uh, decrease my velocity when I'm closer to, to, to ground. Now, obviously that's also because of the weight of the craft, but uh, you can kind of also hear the sound of the engines. Um, uh, you, you hear them accelerate, you hear them decrease in throttle, and it does take a while. So right, right now, just listen to the engine sound. I'm going to re uh, reduce my throttle to zero, and you'll hear how long it takes for them to completely stop. So that was like a few seconds, I, I think maybe two or three seconds, and obviously we're gonna crash now. Um, so not particularly powerful, or what I meant to say, not particularly quick at changing their throttle. So that's really important for VTOLs because you want to be able to uh, do that. No, no, not that at all. You want to be able to basically uh, change your... Eh, there we go, we're standing, yay, look at that. Uh, so you want to be able to change your uh, velocity really quickly so that you can land safely. So let's try the other engines. So we're gonna try Weasley Turbofan engine, and this is a reworked uh, basic jet engine that used to be called just basic jet engine. And so now we're, we're gonna do the same, just gonna put three because I think that's enough. And let's see how quickly it can change its propulsion rate as well. All right, here we go, let's turn them on. Full speed ahead. And we're gonna slow down, stop, and turn them on again. Let's see if we crash, and oh, look at that, it's a little bit better. Definitely a little bit better. In terms of, uh, so we're gonna do the sound test again. In terms of actual change from full throttle to complete stop, let's see how long it takes, and three, two, one, go. And I think it's just as long as the tiny Juno ones. So this is still relatively slow, so it would not really make a very effective VTOL because you would uh, you would need to be really careful when trying to land and take off with these engines. Next on the list is my formerly favorite uh, Ramjet engine. This is what I used to use quite a lot before, but I kind of switched to using repairs now. And so we're going to do the same thing. Let's uh, slowly take off. And I love how they changed the appearance and the actual uh, response of the actual engine shape as it 
basically start its propulsion. And look at the beauty that's coming out of its nozzle. All right, so let's stop. Oh, this is a little bit too powerful. Um, but you can already hear it's taking a little bit too long. So I'm going to go full throttle, try not to crash. Let's see if it can actually slow us down. Yes, it can. So it is very powerful. And now a complete stop. And this is actually even longer than the basic uh, jet engine. So here, if you were to try to use this uh, for uh, for an, uh, a VTOL, it might be a little bit difficult. So even though it is quite powerful, and I'm going to try not to crash, let's see if we can survive this. Uh, because it takes so long to accelerate, that's what happens. It takes too long to accelerate and to decelerate, so it's not going to be able to survive certain conditions where you're basically trying to land safely from uh, from a certain location or from a certain velocity. Now, I could take a look at more of these, but really it's all about this new engine called Panther. Now, Panther is really where I was headed with this, and it's absolutely incredible. Let me show you why. So Panther engine is essentially the quickest engine to uh, go from 0 to 60 in terms of uh, velocity. So here we go. And look how fast this engine is going to respond to my throttle changes. I'm going to just turn it on right now and just look how fast it's going to take off. And here we go. It's already in the air. And I'm going to turn it off. Wait for it to start falling down. And turn it on again. And look at that. Ridiculous. This is super powerful. No, uh, not just powerful, really, really, really fast. And the thing is, it also has another mode, obviously, where you can use the actual turbojet engine to, uh, to do it even faster and more efficiently. So this is probably the only engine that can do these crazy maneuvers. And this is actually a, a, the engine that I would now, from now on, use for VTOLs. And really only this engine, because not only is it powerful, but... It is very, very fast at responding to your commands and will prevent you from crashing. So, And let's actually use the other mode called uh, turbojet or wet mode to try to do the same thing. And this time we're going to have a mission. We're going to try to land on the helipad right there. Uh, I'm going to try to... Here we go. Look at how fast it did that. That's crazy. That's, that's really, really powerful. Okay, it's probably too powerful actually. I'm going to have to decelerate a little bit. And our goal is to get to the helipad and try to land there. And so this is a pretty awesome engine because it's very efficient, it's very, very, very fast, uh, very powerful, and most importantly, responds so quickly to your commands. Oh, so right now I'm trying not to crash here because I actually accelerated a little bit too fast. And let's just decrease the uh, throttle once again. I'm not particularly good at flying VTOLs, as you can tell. Uh, but this one here gives me a lot of hope because I may actually start building VTOLs because now it is so, so, so efficient and so beautiful too. These engines are actually really, really pretty. All right, here we go. Hey, that was almost what I wanted. All right, this time I'm really set on landing on that uh, pad. So I'm going to try to do it really, 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 really gently. Uh, okay, let's take off. And... Very slowly approach the pad. I think I'm going. There we go. I'm going the right way, I think. Yeah, here. I just want to position my craft so it's a little bit easier to control. That's why I'm kind of trying to flip it. And so now our goal is to try not to deviate from this path. Now, in terms of actual control, these engines are brilliant, but in terms of me controlling them, uh, not so much. Basically, I'm not very good at VTOLs. And it's a skill that is worth developing because if you're trying to create a lot of the crafts that are able to take off without the uh, actual uh, runway, or if you're using these to land on other planets uh, by using um, regular engines, regular rocket engines, it's a pretty interesting skill to have. Um, I think uh, people like Scott Manley have developed this quite... Uh, quite well they're basically like experts at uh, all kinds of landings by now i myself i'm still practicing and i, I don't know where you are but uh, it's definitely worth trying because this is one of the more difficult procedures for sure there's actually a challenge on kerbal space program forums where uh, it asks you to not only land here but then it asks you to go to the island over there where the other landing um, area is and fly using your veto fly through the hangars one by one and then come back here and land on these pads again. So it's basically a challenge of your uh, oh uh, mm, your veto skills, but also a challenge of you as a pilot in general. I think it's something I one day will try to do. Not yet, obviously, as you can see, I'm struggling with this. 
Oh, too much, too much, too much power, too much power, less power, less power. So here comes the test of these engines. We're sort of right above the, uh, right above the thingy. Let's blast them full speed ahead and see how fast we can slow down. And look at that, awesome. Definitely slows down really well. Controls really, really amazingly well. And we can uh, rely on these engines for any kind of emergency. Like, like that's uh, that's an emergency right there. I had a, that was an emergency. I needed to slow down really quickly. And look at how awesome this engine can can actually slow down and stop. This is pretty awesome. So even though I'm missing the the actual helipad, I'm able to showcase these engines for their veto ability. So all right. So let's hope this is the magical moment that when I actually finally land. I've been doing this for a few minutes now, and here we go. Let's call this a success. Anyway, so you get the idea. These engines are pretty awesome. So let's actually try to build a craft, or try to attach these two a craft to see how they perform. And let's actually take one of the new craft that has been added to the uh, stock uh, craft here, and it's called Raven Spear Mark IV. This is what it looks like. It has four Panthers in the in the back, which means that it can actually possibly get to some crazy, crazy speeds in the and uh, in, in the lower atmosphere. But what we're, we're going to need to do is we're going to take a fuel tank and we're going to try to attach it right here on the bottom. Actually, two of them, so that we can add the. Uh, the engines on the bottom that will create uh, or make this into a VTOL. And here you have it. I named it Raven Spear Mark V. So it has two uh, Panther engines right here on the bottom. They're not perfectly aligned and they're not really perfectly right in the middle. So there might be some inconsistencies in terms of thrust. But we'll figure this out as we go. So basically now it has six engines. I may also actually assign um, action groups to these engines here so that I, they can actually turn off when I don't need them to. Uh, or, or when I don't need them anymore. So let's toggle engine here and here. And our first um, action group is going to be controlling these bottom engines. All right, so let's see how this goes. Uh, we're going to try to take off and land vertically. And Jebediah Kerman is our pilot today. Let's uh, see what it looks like from his cockpit. So he's ready to go. He's in docking mode right now for some reason, but that's okay. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to change the mode here to uh, a turbojet mode because we want to have as much thrust as we can when taking off vertically. And as soon as these engines enable, uh, and as soon as the craft is flying, we're going to engage these other engines. And there we go. Look at that takeoff. Awesome. Brilliant. All right, and controls really well. This is a brilliantly controllable craft. Engage other engines and retrieve gear. Disable the vertical engines. And here we go, we're flying. Awesome. Now let's try to slow down. We're going to re-engage these engines. Disable these other engines. Retrieve our gear. And now let's try to land vertically as well. Now this might be a lot more difficult than taking off because for one, um, well, as you've just seen in the previous part of the video, I am not good at landing uh, VTOLs. And for two is that uh, it's just, it's a difficult procedure. Um, and even though I'm actually able to sort of control it relatively well, at least in, 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 here in the air, the landing part is really proven to be really difficult. So I'm gonna try to slowly inch my way toward, um, toward the Kerbal Space Center and see if we can try to veto land somewhere nearby uh, or hopefully at least not in the water so basically even though the, these engines are really awesome and they're really really good at what they do uh, the piloting part here is challenging it's really really hard uh, the VTOLs are probably some of the more difficult crafts uh, or airplanes at least uh, to try to land and my goal right now is to try to land as close to run to the runway as I can. And I don't know if I'll be able to slow down right in time without smacking back on, on onto the ground. But you can kind of see how well this controls. I mean, this is such a really simple design. And really, it's all of because of these engines. If you position them just in the right way, you'll be able to turn any kind of an airplane or any kind of an SSTO even. Um, basically, any kind of a space plane into a really efficient... VTOL that will allow you to land anywhere relatively quickly, relatively easily. Now, obviously, this will only work on Kerbin and on Leith uh, because these engines only work in air-breathing atmosphere uh, or oxygen-rich atmosphere, that is. Uh, but uh, this is really, really, really good news for those of us that want to take 
air breathing um, space planes to lathe because that means that you can now really easily land on one of those tiny islands. So if you've never been to lathe, it's basically um, it's a moon of jewel that has uh, a huge amount of water and only a few islands where you can kind of land successfully. And trying to land uh, just using the gear and um, a space plane will usually result in a crash because the terrain on lathe is not very, um, it's, it's very rough, it's not very smooth, so it's kind of difficult to land and I've tried many times. So you're kind of forced to use parachutes most of the time. And uh, this means that now we can basically construct a VTOL and just inch our way toward those islands the same way I'm doing right now. And if you get really good at controlling VTOLs, you can then basically land and take off from the same area using this relatively awesome design. And I think maybe in one of the future, future videos, especially if I get much better at flying VTOLs, I'm going to try to do that myself. I'm going to try to build... Uh, an SSTO or, or maybe like a two-stage to orbit craft where basically we'll be using just uh, uh, the air breathing engines. Oh, yay, no, yay, yay or nay? Yay, all right, awesome. That's kind of a landing, I guess. Uh, so yeah, this works and it's pretty awesome and I love it. Uh, and just doing this on the lathe would be pretty awesome. I think uh, if we can pull it off, if we can land something as beautiful as this and then take it off again, from Lathe, uh, it will be a pretty awesome mission. And I think uh, if you are trying to do this yourself, I would change these engines to repairs, um, possibly place another toroidal spike somewhere in the middle just because you want to uh, circularize your orbit above the atmosphere, and then place these dudes, uh, these beautiful babies, on the bottom so you can turn this into a veto and an SSTO. And I think in the next video, we'll just try just that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this little introduction to the new engines. And hopefully now you know how to use Panther after burning turbofans uh, with a little bit more efficiency because they're not just really awesome in the atmosphere, but they're absolutely brilliant for VTOLs. Thank you guys and game you later. And bye bye. And here we go. We're going to just sit down here and reflect on our mission. I think everything just went fine, right? except for this part. Bye-bye, guys, and game you later.